Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. On Wednesday, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh announced major reforms as part of reorganisation of the army headquarters. What are these reforms? What do they mean? And will there be more such reforms going forward is what we are looking at today in Government Matters with me, Ruhi Tiwari. In the studio with me, I have Snehesh Alex Philip, who is an in-house defence expert. Uh, Snehesh, to begin with, can you tell us what these reforms that were announced yesterday are? And then we'll, of course, talk about what they mean going forward. Well, uh, Ruhi... Uh you know, three major decisions were announced by the Ministry of Defence yesterday, but the most important one, which I feel is the one pertaining to the creation of a special cell within the Army headquarters, which will now look after all human rights issues, you know, uh, and what I mean by human rights issues are will look after all, uh, will probe all uh, reports of alleged human rights violation by the forces wherever they operate, be it in Jammu and Kashmir or be it in the Northeast. Uh, interestingly, this particular uh, cell would be headed by an uh, ADG rank officer, that means a uh, major general rank officer, who will be reporting to the vice chief. But interest, what is what is interesting is that for the first time ever, you now have an IPS officer, you know, who would be on deputation to the army headquarters. So he would be an SP rank officer. Uh, while uh, so you know officials say that he has been brought in because that would lead to better coordination uh, with the Ministry of Home Affairs, with uh, the local police, and other uh, you know investigative agencies when it comes to uh, issues of uh, human rights violations. Right. Uh, besides this, uh, another important step that has been taken uh, by the def uh, by the army is the fact that uh, there is a new cell that has been a vigilance cell that would be again headed by a two-star officer that is a major rank officer but this cell would be coming directly under the uh, command of the army chief you know prior to this you know there was a dv branch which used to look after all these issues but now this particular uh, new cell will report directly to the army chief but uh, the interesting aspect uh, to this particular cell is the fact that you will also have officers uh, from the Indian Navy and the Indian Air Force. Right. So uh, this, you know, came as a complete surprise. You know, I, I can understand there's a vigilance cell, you know, which comes under the Army Chief because that's what the government wants. Uh, but to have officers from the Air Force and the Navy. So this in is this for cell, better cohesion. So this, so you know, I, this was completely surprising. So I spoke to officials at the Army headquarters, and they say that you know this was, this is to bring in a, uh, you know, a transparency into the entire system. And also to you know bring in an outside uh, view into the whole case, so that there are no biases that are there. Right. So that is one step. And the third is the uh, you know the restructuring that has happened in the uh, in the army headquarters, under which there would be over 200 officers who who will now be you know off duty from the army headquarters, and they'll move to the field areas. Right. Which in, yeah. Now, Snehesh, these are very interesting uh, points that you mentioned, and we we've known that this has happened, but. As a layperson, I want to understand what this really means. I mean, how does it make things different from how they were so far? So let's begin with talking about the human rights cell. What was happening so far? See, uh, as far as human rights cell is concerned, you know, in, in case there is a uh, there are any complaints that are received by the army uh, regarding its personnel, uh, there used to be a court of inquiry that used to look into this issue. And uh, as per the army, the majority of the complaints that have majority actually for, for that matter, re nearly 95% of the complaints received by it uh, of cases of alleged uh, human rights violation are found to be completely untrue. Now, you know, when the army probes it, when the army does his own inquiry and says, Ki, boss, you know, we are innocent or this complaint is false, it leads to a lot of doubts in the you know, in people mind. So that is why this new cell has been created now, which will also have an IPS officer on deputy. So does it mean it's expected to be more objective? The well, uh, the army would say that it was always objective is, is to, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, given the fact that, you, you know, human rights is a major issue uh, and the Indian army, uh, you know, uh, you know, as as uh, you know, as often upholded the uh, human rights issues, there have been cases where, uh, you know, uh, people have been found guilty of you know violations, uh, but it's it, it was important for the army to put out a picture at least of the fact that it upholds the human rights values and it is open for any kind of probe. So you haven't. So that is the reason why they've roped in a police officer per se into this uh, whole you know this new cell. But if you ask me, what does it all mean? 
Uh, well, you know, this was this is part of army's you know uh, mega plan to restructure the army headquarters. Now, if you look at um, the army headquarters, it's a huge structure. It has multiple branches. You know, right from uh, right from the chief's office to the military secretariat right. to the JAG, which is the law the law department for the army. Uh, there are multiple offices. There are so it's like a huge giant office. Now, uh, the army is also a nearly a 13 lakh strong army. The plan of the Indian army, and uh, this was actually first mentioned by Prime Minister Narendra Modi himself in way back in 2015 during the Combined Commanders Conference on board uh, you know, aircraft carrier Vikramaditya, in which he had mentioned that he expects, you know, the, he, he, he nearly stressed on two important issues. One was joinness. Uh, joiners means uh, you know cohesion between the three services that is the Indian Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. Right. The other big focus of him was on having a leaner military. You know, leaner military means you know less dependence on personnel, but more on you know technology, more on weapons, more on systems. So the Army is now has um, you know uh, carried out four internal studies. You know, uh, for the reorganization of the Army as a whole. So one of the studies focused on this, uh, you know, the headquarter level, you know, how to right. reorganize the army headquarters. Now, the, eventually the plan of the Indian Army is to cut down uh, the number of uh, soldiers, you know, the, its personal strength uh, by about about 1.5, about 1.5 lakh over the next four to five years. So going forward, these are the kind of reforms uh, we are expecting. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So going forward, these are only the first three uh, reforms that have been uh, cleared by the Ministry of Defense. Uh, there are multiple reforms that are in the pipeline, uh, which the army, which the government has given in principle approval, because this is also what the government also so wants. So one, as you mentioned, is a leaner army, uh, a leaner more army. dependence on technology, less on personnel. And can you mention a couple of more such? Well, uh, you know, for plans? example, these three, uh, these three things have been made. For example, now you will also have the RR. You know, that, that is the Rashtra Rifles Directorate. Rashtra Rifles primarily operates in Jammu and Kashmir. You know, uh, and but. Interestingly, the headquarters of the uh, the chief of the RR used to sit here in Delhi. So uh, the plan is now to move this office uh, from Delhi to Udhampur, which makes complete sense. You know, uh, so that is one step that would be done. There is now there are two training centers that you have. You know, you uh, so one is the R track, which is there. So the, now the plan is to uh, move R track uh, from Shimla to closer to Delhi, which is in Meerut. So that that is a proposal which is uh, which uh, has become controversial because back in Shimla there are people who have raised some objections to it. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that uh, Rui, take it from me, the in the in the coming few months you would see a decision being taken on moving the art track from Shimla to uh, right. So clearly the focus of this government is uh, reforms in the defence uh, arena. In fact, in the Independence Day speech, the Prime Minister made a big announcement of a Chief of Defence Staff. Can we expect more reforms now that in the army headquarters we've seen some restructuring? Can we expect more reforms in the other forces as well? Well, uh, you know, as far as the Navy and the Air Force is concerned, it's very small in comparison to uh, what the army is. Now, uh, there are reforms. What the, basically the, uh, the army, the Navy, and the Air Force doesn't really need manpower reforms. You know, in a major way, you know, those reforms are eventually needed. But what the Navy and the Air Force needs is you know, uh, better weapon, we better weapon system, better technology, and that is something that the government is focusing on. Now, for example, the Air Force. So, India, the India carried out the Balakot strike successfully, but uh, remember that on the 27th, the next day, there was a you know air battle that right. took place, and uh, the the uh, you know Wing Commander Abhinandan Vartaman was shot down. Um, he was flying a MiG-21 Bison, which is which is an aging aircraft. You know the Air Force has has a huge uh, issue when it comes to aircraft. The you know uh, the 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 fighters are on a depleting strength. Even though the sanction strength is uh, 40 uh, 42, the right now the Air Force only has about uh, 30 squadrons of aircraft. And remember that you know we we did the story uh, this week about uh, the Jaguar fighter aircraft. You know, so there are a lot of issues as far as the Air Force and the Navy is concerned, but that's more to do with uh, technology and weapon systems. And that's something the government will want to focus on as well. And that well. is something, right. yes, that the government is focusing on. Right. Thank you, Snehesh. Well, that was Snehesh uh, breaking it down for us, what the changes and what the reforms in Ar the Army headquarters really mean. And going forward, what more reforms can we expect the government to bring in? Thank you for watching Government Matters.